Hi! Touche's standalone mode is not only useful for controlling hardware synths without your computer. When in standalone mode, Touche functions as a USB MIDI class compliant device that will be recognized by your DAW just as if it was a standard MIDI controller with knobs and faders. This means you can actually use Touche to control parameters that can't be addressed by Lie. For instance, you could control parameters inside your plugins that don't support host automation, parameters inside plugins that aren't VST instruments at all, or even just control elements inside your DAW. You can find articles on how to use the MIDI mapping functionality of your particular DAW in our knowledge base. In this video, I just want to show you a quick example of how to directly control a virtual instrument that reacts to MIDI CC but doesn't support host automation. I prepared a multi using this orchestral tools library in contact. As is the case with a lot of sample libraries used by film and media composers, MIDI CC automation plays a large role in the workflow. Normally, you would control these CCs with faders, but with Touche it's just a lot more hands-on and fun. Let's say that with Touche's lateral axis, I want to morph through different articulations using the crossfade key switch function of the library. I wanted to get a bit more sophisticated this time, so I chose four different articulations at the same time. For this low string instrument, I want to have legato sustained by standard, and then I want to be able to crossfade to other articulations using just one MIDI CC. Next to legato, I'll have sul ponticello trill and sul ponticello tremolo available, as well as some upbeat bow strikes. On top of that, with a top pressure axis on Touche, I want to control the dynamics of the strings, which would normally be done with a model wheel. And then I even added a second instrument in the contact multi, a man's choir. I want to be able to mix them in by pushing the bottom axis of Touche, and I want them to crossfade from normal sustain to a more dramatic power sustain when I'm playing the fat upbeats with the strings. By the way, only the upbeats of the strings and the choir will be played polyphonically, whereas all the rest will play beautiful mono legato. How can I map these parameters to Touche? You'll quickly realize that you can't drag or drop a CC or host automation number from the automation tabs of contact in this case. Only some mixer settings and attack release parameters are available here. This means that it doesn't make much sense to use the standard workflow for mapping, which would be hosting contact inside Lie. Instead, I opened contact directly as an instrument inside my DAW, and I will steer the parameters inside contact from Touche as a standalone device. For this, I need to build a hardware preset that has the right CCs configured. To make this process transparent to you, I will go for a workflow that is comparable with the one I used when creating a hardware preset for a hardware synth in the last video. On the one hand, of course, I will have the instrument active, which is contact in this case. This replaces our hardware synth, so to say. And in parallel to this, I will open the EA on a separate track, not hosting anything, but just to translate the MIDI data coming from Touche into the right CCs. I'll create a new hardware preset for this. Feel free to check out our video about the data being sent by Touche if you want to have a deeper understanding of this topic. Now I will forward the CCs generated by Lie to the virtual instrument. Please be aware that unfortunately this only works when using the VST version of Lie, not with the audio unit format. In Cubase, I can just choose the MIDI output of the Lie track as MIDI input of the contact track. Then I will arm both tracks. We can now see both Lie and how the CCs being sent by it manipulate the library's parameters. At least once we've set it up. First I have to look up inside the library which CCs are expected when I want to control the parameters. In case of orchestral tools, you can alt click on a parameter and it will open the respective page in the controller table. And here's what I found. For the multi-articulations crossfader, it's CC22. To change the dynamics of the strings, I need to send CC1 to the library. And for the dynamics of the choir, it would be CC1 as well, but since Touche can only send on one MIDI channel at a time, I have both strings and choir on channel 1. Therefore, if I want to control the dynamics of the choir independently from the strings, I need to change its CC. Let's just use CC3 instead. Now let's be real picky here. I don't want the choir to be heard at all when not pushing the bottom axis. Even if the dynamics are at the minimum value, however, it means that they are singing pianissimo very quietly, but it doesn't mean that they're completely silent. So in addition to the dynamics, I will also control the choir's volume at the same time. This is CC7 by standard. Again, this CC would conflict with the strings because they use the same one, so I'll choose CC4 instead. 
Now I can build a hardware preset for Touche that sends exactly these parameters. CC1, the dynamic control for the strings, will be assigned to the top axis. The dynamics of the choir, which was CC3, will be assigned to the bottom axis. The volume of the choir, which was CC4, will also be assigned to the bottom. I already know that I don't want to have its volume level jumping up from nowhere, it just wouldn't sound natural. So I'll increase the minimum value quite a bit. I also bend the curve so that it quickly reaches an audible level. After all, we already control the dynamics of the choir, so no need to go crazy with a more technical sounding volume. Now let's deal with the crossfading. The CC to morph through the four different articulations was number 22. I will control this CC using the lateral axis combined as one. To do so, I need to activate both left and right axis for the slot. As you can see by the value metering of the slot, the value sent when Touche is in an idle position will now be 64, which is right in the middle of the 128 MIDI steps. If I shift the touch plate to the left, the value will decrease, and if I shift it to the right, it will increase. Let's compare this with what we see in the articulations crossfade in the library. Sending the value 64 would mean that we end up being right in the middle of the second and third articulation, leaving us with a mixed sound. When not moving the touch plate sideways, I would prefer to be playing the sustain articulation exclusively though. Therefore, I will need to shift the value that is sent in idle position. Only adjusting the minimum or maximum values doesn't help me here, because I seek to change what's happening when I'm right in the middle. Instead, the sensitivity curve of the slot is the right tool for the task. I could hand draw a curve that is working just perfect for the occasion, but instead let's just bend the linear curve. The legato zone we aim for corresponds with the second quarter of the y-axis of the curve, so I will bend the curve until the white dot ends up being more in that area. That's all. We now have a preset tailor-made for this specific sound. Pretty cool. Once you're happy, you can save the hardware preset in Lie. Since it doesn't include the sound itself, make sure that you also save the multi in contact. Now you could transfer the Lie hardware preset to Touche's internal memory via memory view. We explained how to do this in the video about playing with hardware presets. After doing so, you don't need to load Lie inside your DAW anymore. You can just control the instrument directly with Touche as standalone controller. Just make sure that the sound preset in the instrument and the hardware preset dialed up in Touche do match and that the track is armed to receive MIDI both from your keyboard controller as well as from Touche. With this video, we've reached the end of our comprehensive tutorial series on Touche. Don't hesitate to let us know if there's a topic that you would like us to feature in a future video. In the meantime, please check out our online knowledge base for answers to some of the most common questions. And feel free to open a new support ticket should you need individual email assistance. On behalf of the whole team at Expressive E, we hope that you have lots of fun getting creative with your new expressive instrument. Thanks a lot for watching and take care.